Hi there, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel. And today you join me with the new Audi Q8. And this one is the entry level. This is the S line. It's one of seven, yes, seven different trim levels. That's an awful lot to choose from. You can see it's an S line because of the little badge just here. Starts at around 64,000 UK pounds and includes all of the following features. LED headlights at the front, as well as some really nice LEDs at the rear. A choice of 21 inch alloys and air suspension. Electronically adjusted sports seats, leather too. Ooh. You get front and rear reverse cameras with beepers. It comes with three separate screens, smartphone mirroring and sat nav. Autonomous brake in front and rear, as well as lane keeping and cruise control, which isn't bad for an entry level car. Let's go and take a look around and see what else you get for your 64,000 pounds. Okay, let's start at the front like we should do, as we always do. And the first thing you notice is this lovely grille. It's really, really aggressive, really sporty. It's got some sporty lines down the bottom here, very sort of aero and splitter styly down there. I really like that. And I love the way the bonnet softens all this and it comes towards, you've got like gloss here, and there's matte in here as well. And you've got that lovely Quattro badge because every one of these cars comes as a Quattro. We'll talk about that when we get to gearboxes and engines and things like that. All blends into this beautiful Audi logo that you see here. That coming together of those four cars, those four, that union of those four companies that created Audi all those years ago. And then you've got a choice on LED headlights. You can either go for these, the standard LEDs, or you can upgrade to the Matrix headlights, which are really nice. Again, rim-wise, you can go 21, 22, or even 23-inch rims if you really want to go silly. On top of that, you get nice foldy in mirrors as well. I love these. Lock the car up, mirrors fold in, nice and safe. No one's going to smash them because I can imagine they're going to be quite expensive. And then you've got these colours, these amazing 12 different colours. This is one in particular that I really, really like. However, my favourite has to be the new Dragon Orange. It is stunning. You've got to go check that out. And it is totally, totally exclusive to a Q8. So if ever you see it out on the road, you know instantly that that is a Q8. I'm loving this car. I'm loving all the bits on it. Another thing I really love, and I'm going to keep saying I love how much I love this car, are these frameless doors. Look at this. This is really unusual because normally in an SUV, you have big chunky doors with frames all around them. This is very coupe style. And I think this is where Audi wanted to go with the Q8. It's their premium SUV and they didn't want it looking like some big chugger bang, if you get where I'm going with that one. Another thing that you get with this car is keyless entry and keyless ignition. But this isn't just any old key. You can actually have this connected to your smartphone via an app with up to four users. So if there's four of you in a family and you want to share the car, or four of you at work and you're going to share it, wherever you're going to share it, four users with up to 400 parameters per user. And what I mean by that is, let's say I'm one of those users, I get in, this car will remember that I like my seat in a certain place. I like the temperature at a certain setting. And I also like certain places that I go and frequent that often. Not perhaps that I'd want them all remembered, but however, it does remember all those bits and pieces for you. Up to 400 of those individual memories. It's quite scary when you think about it. Anyway, speaking of scary, there's some different engines that come with this car. Let's go and check them out under the bonnet. Bonnet release down here in the driver's side, just a single pull on this car. Don't forget, if you are not in the UK, then it'll be in the passenger side because they're not going to swap it around just because you're in a different country. Anyway, uh, bonnet release itself right in the middle there and you've got a couple of nice gas struts lift up that very, very heavy bonnet. I felt that then. Um, really sorry, not much to look at here. However, there are two very big air intakes here at the front feeding those twin turbos into this engine here. Now, this is the 3-litre V6 diesel engine. It produces 286 brake horsepower. I did say that, did you hear me? There's a few of our friend horsey friends over there listening. Um, you can get this as a V6 petrol engine and it produces 340 brake horsepower. It's a little bit more. However, I have noticed this engine is rather good. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. If you're not happy with either of those and you just want to go all eco-friendly, man, you can go for a couple of options on the hybrids as well. There's two different hybrids. Or if you really want to go all singing and all dancing for that 104,000 SQ8, that comes with a V8 four litre engine. All of these engines come with one gearbox. That is your eight speed Tiptronic. And don't forget, 
because this is Audi, every single one of these cars comes with the Audi Quattro all-wheel drive system. I think you have to agree, round at the back, this is stunning looking. Look at the design on this car, the way it's all been put together. It is pure genius, I think. Let's start right at the top. We like starting at the top. You've got your DAB radio aerial up there. You also got a nice bit of aero here. Now this aero, not only does it help keep the back of this car down, but it will also bring all that muck and the water when you're driving through, you know, say you're going off-road in this car, doubt you ever will, but if you did, all that muck and stuff is gonna come flying over. If you do get it on the rear screen, you've got a wash wipe there, that's good. And also with this screen, there's some aero running down the side here as well. It's a floaty screen, so there's no rubbers. So it doesn't sit in a horrible rubber thing and then it ends up with water in it and ends up rusting all the back here. That's not gonna happen. Not that it ever would with an Audi anyway. It's big as well, which means the rear view out of this car is superb. You can see for miles out the back here. I like that. And it's all privacy glass around the back. You probably noticed that as well. Another thing I really love about this car are these rear clusters. They are superb, the LED clusters, and they run, this red light runs all the way across at night and it looks stunning, really lovely. Audi badge yet again. Then down the bottom here, a little bit more aero going on. You've almost got like a diffuser style going on down here as well. Good thing, no fake exhausts. Look, it's just really nice, nicely put together. Let's have a look inside. There's every single Audi Q8 comes with an assisted tail lift, electronically assisted tail lift. You'd expect that, wouldn't you? It's a premium SUV at the end of the day. But one thing I don't think you were expecting was the size. Look at this. 605 litres of boot space, absolutely huge. The only problem is, and I want to show you this, I love the design of this car, it is a coupe SUV, and what I mean by that is you'll see it slides down here, it cuts off, unlike the Q7, which is very boxy and goes up. So what you tend to lose, when you want to put stuff in here, I tried the other day with a couple of suitcases, I was giving someone a lift to the airport, trying to put the suitcases, and the problem was they sat too high. So when every time I wanted to shut the boot, it was lost here. However, this car is really designed as like, you know, the, the luxury SUV that you're gonna buy to show off to a few friends. It's not gonna be as practical maybe as the Q7, but that, I can forgive it that because of all the bits you get on this car. Now, speaking of bits, one thing this has extra is an electronic parcel shelf. So that automatically slides back when the, when the boot opens up there problem is with that look how far away it is just trying to get it out and have to actually climb in the boot to get it out it does pop out easy enough once you've got it out is there's just nowhere to put it because it'd be ideal if you could just sling it in there with the rest of the gubbins and the bits and pieces but you can't so you're landed with it it's either going to end up just thrown in sideways or your passengers are going to have to have it on their on their laps you know which is a shame in a way because that I think could have been thought out a little bit better. One thing inside here, which is again, a little bit disappointing for a car of this magnitude, you get this old, you know, the, the puncture repair kit. Why, why would the latex injection stuff, you know, and, and a pump, they put a pump in here. If you're gonna, you know, bugger one of these wheels and you, you're not gonna be able to pump it up with a load of latex, are you? is just going to end up on the side of the road looking a right chump. What they need is a space saver. And from what I've seen here, there's a big round sort of uh, pannier bit that can come out here. And I bet you, you can have an option to put a space saver wheel in there, which would be so much better with a jack. It's going to save you so much time as well, trust me. Anyway, that's my little... And, and also you can keep your subwoofer there as well, because looking at it, it goes right the way in there. So there you go. Lovely, non-scratchy surface at the back here. Nice bit of stainless steel. It's going to stop when you are trying to put case here and stuff in here. It's, it's not going to scratch all the back here. Really good. Another thing which I really love, you've got to watch this. Ready? So you can see the height of this at the moment. There's a button over here. So here we go. We're going to take a little ride while we're chatting to you. Um, you can actually lower this car and raise it up to whatever height you need. So if you're loading and you've got something rather heavy and you don't want to lift it so high, you've got a self-leveler here. You can just push this button and it will go up and down <laughs> to your heart's content. On top of that, another thing that you get, oh it's, oh, it's going all the way up now, look at that. How much higher are we going to, I'll be trying to climb in there in a minute. There's another button here, you've got to watch this. Now, time for a little bit of like slow-mo because it's, it's just going to take a second to do this. Ready? Wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming. Check it out. It's almost slow motion. 
It's the slow-mo tow bar. <laughs> That is wonderful. The amount of work that's gone into that to make that do that is just extraordinary. But you've got to love it because on a lot of others, you have to actually hook it up or crunch it back. Whereas this one, you can actually uh, enjoy the moment. It reminds me. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm getting to that age. Right, so in the back here, ignoring that and ignoring me, you've got 40, 40, 20 split on the seats. Now, another thing which I would have loved to have seen is some way of releasing the seats because you can't in the back here. You've got to walk all the way around here to actually get inside and release the seats, both sides, which is such a shame. But I will show you that when we do the passenger bit at the back because I think there's no point in doing it around here. You'll just be staring at me in the back of a car. Let's do that now. Okay, before I jump in the back for the passengers, check out the size of this door. It's absolutely huge, but it's got a little drawback with this. Watch this window. It might be big and it is privacy glass, but when you put it down like this, bosh, that's as far as it goes. I think that's really bad. You really do need the window to come down. I know there is that safety element with kids, with, with doggies and things like that, but you should be able to have a button down here somewhere or somewhere on the computer that goes, you know, release the windows, let them go all the way down, because if you can't, that is a bit of a waste of space. Lovely finishing on this car. You've got lovely gloss wood all around the door handle here, aluminium door handles, really nice. Alcantara paneling all the way through here. It's real top class. Um, speaking of top class, I did mention this has a quirky little way of folding the seats down. I like the fact you know it's it's here and you can fold them down but it would have been nice having a, a an additional handle in the back to do this however there is a handle here there's another one that side that just pops it down click it up that then locks in position another thing which is really nice there's a handle at the front here you can actually slide that seat forward like that that will give you some extra space extra load room however it does create a bit of a gap down here nonetheless you've got a huge amount of space 1750 cubic litres of space in here. Massive, massive. We put a cart horse in here. Oh, sorry, I didn't say anything. He's listening again. Right, we're going to pop that back up. Same thing again, just uh, grab the handle there and push it up. And then you can push the whole seat back just like that. Neat, eh? Right, getting in and out of here. Beautiful, absolutely easy. Look at that. Look at the amount of leg room you've got as well. Also over here, just to mention, you've got independent heating controls up here, which is really lovely. You can turn them on and off. I like that when it's on that level over here. You haven't just got it here. Speaking of over here, I'm just going to pop the power on up the front here so you can see this because it really is rather neat. There we go. It's all firing up the front. Look at that. It's independent heating at the back. You've got heated rear seats. You've literally got everything in the back here. You can set it up digitally as well. You can lower it down. You can raise it up. So easy. And you can turn them on and off. These have got really nice clickers as well. So when it, oh, listen to that. I oh, know, it's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> I love little things like that. Another thing I've noticed in the back here as well, recessed seat belts. So sliding across, you know, if you're gonna have to be that fifth person, hey, there, fifth person in the back here. You're gonna have to be that fifth person in the back here to make it nice and easy to get across that, that transmission tunnel in the middle there. Um, it's not the most comfortable, but it's a boozy lunch seat. That's what we call it. It's when you've been down the pub or you've been out for a bit of lunch with a couple of members of the staff, you know, and the three of you got to squeeze in the back here and you get your manager to drive you back because, you know, well, perhaps I'm going a little bit too far down the experience route there. Anyway, it is for that. And you're in the back here, obviously, between the two. <laughs> yes, whatever. Um, one thing about this in the middle, you do get a nice armrest and you get a double cup holder in the middle here pops up like that really nice and neat and you can pop that back up one other thing you get in the back here is as I said 40 20 40 so you have the ski hatch this is a place where you can push the little button which is here and you pop it down like that you can now get your skis in here or your snowboard so if you're off to the Alps to do your skiing absolutely perfect here in the UK we call it the B&Q hatch. And the reason we call it the B&Q hatch, B&Q is a large chain of DIY stores. And most Saturdays, us gentlemen, people like to go down there and buy large long lengths of wood that we use to fix things around our homes. And this car is absolutely perfect for a two meter long piece of wood that probably about uh, that thickness. And you can also take both kids with you, keeps the wife happy, the partner, whoever, and they can get their McDonald's or their KFC or whatever. And you can just put all your wooden bits through here and everybody's happy. So that's your B&Q hatch, but it really is a ski hatch. 
I love it in the back here. A couple of curtsy lights up the back here, nice LEDs. You've got a sort of semi-panoramic sunroof in this car. Um, it's nice, but it's not the full length, but it does give plenty of light in here. All in all, a very, very comfortable space to be. I would not be averse to sitting in here for a few hours with a nice book or a laptop or an iPad or something, or just some nice tunes on. However, that's not what we're here for. Let's go find out what it's like for the driver. Let's get up front. So, as mentioned earlier, keyless entry and keyless ignition. I'm gonna jump in because, uh, I mean, this car is just built for driving. It's, it's an Audi at the end of the day. I'm not gonna expect anything less than the perfect seating position, which is what you can get this seat into with its electronic, you know, it's got all manner of different positions you can get it in using that electronic thing. I'm sure you're gonna find the perfect seat for yourself. Um, another thing, this steering wheel, which is really great. You've got tons and tons of movement here. Look how, it's almost like flying a plane, this car. Um, manually adjusted on this car. If you want one that is electronically adjusted, it's an extra 400 UK pounds. Save your money, do it yourself. Look how easy that is. It doesn't really need it to be electronically adjusted, does it, guys? Right, now, I've got this open for a reason because this is a great place. They've made a little hole, same shape as the key. You can pop that in there like that. The only thing is, if you've got a fob on it, it's gonna stop you using this as a cup holder because you won't be able to get your cup in the front there or if it's in the back there, you know what I'm saying. So lose the key fob and just put your key in there and then you can close it away like that. How nice is that? Piano black everywhere. We've got three screens in this car. We've got a 10 inch screen here. Got a, um, uh, sorry, we've got an eight inch screen here. Got to get my screens right here. Eight inch here, 10 inch up here, 12 inch over here three lovely big screens let's fire it up I'm not going to put my foot on the brake because we don't want the engine to start I'm going to push the button there and it's all going to come up into life look at that beautiful so down here is your heating control panel and it also acts as your media control panel as well so you can quite easily flip between the two there's the media so your favorite radio stations will pop up there and if you just want it, you know, it's, it really is, no, I don't want to continue as a guest. There we go, it's asking me to set up now. So that's your top screen up there. So you've got my phone up there. We've got the sat nav on there. We've got the media that's playing at the moment. You can go to home and then we've got all the widgets here and you can just slide between them. There's tons and tons of stuff on here. Um, to be honest, I like it set on the home screen like that and then you can adjust your heating. It's a really, really nice system. The other thing I love is the fact that it's all built into this glass here. And another strange thing, when you actually turn this screen off, you will see all the fingerprints because it's inevitable. That's exactly how it is. However, if you want, oh, I've turned the stereo on. There we go. <laughs> stereo, that's an old word, isn't it? I have turned the tunes on. Sorry, guys. Went a little bit old school on you there. Um, what I've noticed is it's very easy to clean with your hand. Um, I don't know whether it's something to do with the actual material, but I managed to just wipe it off with my hand. You don't have to go and get a cleaning cloth. Really good that, I like that. Okay, so let's start. A little bit more technical stuff for you, and then we'll get back over here on all those bits and pieces. Lighting cluster to your right here. Simple, you can just put it on auto or click it again. Then all these buttons are like haptics. You touch them and they've got a feedback to them. So you know you've actually done something with it. Um, down here you've got a place to put your shades or you want to put your wallet in there. Just don't forget it's in there because I've got the habit of putting stuff in there and then going in the house and go, oh, I've left my wallet in there or I've left you know, my shades in there. Um, moving slightly over here, so you've got your right-hand side of your steering wheel. Very simple steering wheel on this particular car. This is the S-Line. It's got an S there, see? So that reminds us we're in the S-Line. Um, we've got the media section here. Um, just a simple scroll right, scroll left, so you can change stations. So you go, look, absolute radio, 90s, 80s, there we go, 70s, tell what I like listening to. Volume in the center there, turn it down. You've got Ask Audi there, which is basically like Ask Siri or Alexa or whatever. You just push that button and it's got a number of different things you can do with it. And then there's the telephone system there. So once you've got your telephone rigged in, this has got wireless Apple Play as well as connectable Apple Play. It's got Android mirroring on it as well. And you can use all that through that telephone button there. Really nice. Wiper stick over here. You can set up your intermittent wiping. You've got your auto wiping on there as well. Very nice and simple and easy to do. On the left here, this is your lighting stalk. This will set your lighting up. And down the bottom here is your cruise control. Again, very easy to set. Once you push the set button, you just push down, hold it down like that. It will set to the speed you're at, or you can increase the speed by holding it up like that. It's also got a speed limiter on it as well. Really nice and easy to use. Um, over here on the left, you've also got your media section here in the center. So you can scroll 
it will take you through your telephone system, I your media system, Could you try again? and my watch is trying to get involved as well now for some reason. You can also change the view on here, which is really nice. So you can actually have a smaller uh, rev meter or tachymeter, whatever you call it, and a smaller speedo, and have a much bigger center section here. By doing that, that also means if you go to the actual map, look at that, it goes right the way across. It's really nice. Um, and you've got your rest of your info up at the top there. You've got your mileage left to go on your petrol or your fuel. You've got what media station, and so on and so on. When someone rings you, it that comes up there as well. I think the Audi infotainment system in general is probably one of the best in the world. I've got to say that because I really do. I think others follow where these guys lead the way. Um, We've looked at the left and the right hand side of this. Very simple to set up, very easy to use. You've got your paddles here as well. So if you want to go into a manual mode and start using this engine and its car, this you know whole gearbox and everything to its maximum, you can do that on your paddles there. It's not really that type of car to be honest, but it does have a few modes on it. Um, you've got a nice little, this is, I call it more than an armrest because you can actually slide it back and you can slide it up. It's just beautifully designed. This pops up and inside here you've got a wireless Apple charger. I call it a wireless Apple charger because if you haven't got an Apple you can use one of these. It's a USB-C converter and the USB-Cs, there's two of them just in there. So you might need two if you've got two of you up the front here. Little place to put loose change and bits and pieces or you can actually put, I'll show you, I've got a pair here put a pair of reading glasses in there like that and they won't get crushed because when that pops down like that you can lift it and they get covered up how nice and neat is that okay so we mentioned in here we've got the keys double cup holder and there is a 12 volt adapter in there and to your right here obviously you've got your gear selector here and then we've got the auto handbrake hold system here moving slightly up we've got the parking cameras up here which can be turned on or off and we've also got some knobs, one little knob all in his own, and that's your volume knob. But I quite like that because if you do get in and it's all left singing and dancing, you can turn it down straight away like I just did there. It's nice to be able to grab hold of a knob, guys. Come on, we know that. Unfortunately, the heating is not uh, of knob desire. It is uh, more of your digital style, but it is very easy to use. And you know, it's again, you've got to push for this. It's, it's not a touch one. See that? Look, you've got to actually feel the haptic move. It moves under your fingers like it's not a vibrate it's just like a quite a satisfying touch there you've got heated front seats naturally aircon as you would expect then you've got your media bits up here as i said earlier you've got your telephone system we've got the nav system and everything it's really lovely i love the way this is all set up let's have a look in the glove box see what we've got in there it's a huge glove box but unfortunately half of it's being taken up by the owner's manual um i think it's about time that we started getting rid of look look how many pages? Please, someone tell me, do you really need this when you can go online and in seconds you can be on YouTube looking for the answer to the question you really want to know about this car, like how does the nav work? How do I reset my mileage or something? Do you really need a book that big? Because that, thrown away with this, because again, it has to come in its nice little Audi package. If you got rid of all that, imagine how many hundreds of thousands of these are having to be made you could probably well first of all you get a much bigger vanity tray in there and secondly you could probably get you know almost the price of a space saver wheel that's where i was going with that let's shut that up you've got some nice clicky air vents up here as well which are built in and if you look at the whole fascia here it's all that lovely piano piano black as it all sort of blends into one I think the whole design of this car is absolutely superb the finish and the quality but there again, at 64,000 UK pounds entry level, I think it really warrants all this. I really do. And as for the 104,000 plus, it's going to have to go some to actually make that value for money, in my opinion. Anyway, one thing I'd like to do with this car is get it out on the road, give it its final road test and give you our evaluation of this new Audi Q8. So here we are, guys. We're out on the road in the glorious, the lovely... The Audi Q8 and I'm loving driving this. First up, I just want you to listen. Ready? Listen. Nothing. The soundproofing is incredible on this car. There's no wheel noise, there's no road feedback from the wheels or the tyres. I can barely hear that diesel engine. I was expecting I could hear that. I can barely hear it. And the, the whole drive on this car, the peripheral vision, the actual the, the light that's coming into this car, just making driving it just beautiful. 
I'm really, really enjoying it. I purposely brought it out on the country roads because a big car like this, you want to get a feel of the, the width and the actual versatility of the car, how it performs, you know, going through very narrow gaps, going off road a little bit. Speaking of uh, going off road and stuff like that, another thing that is really helping this car to give me that sort of ultimate drive is the adaptive damping system and the adaptive air suspension system that Audi have built into this car. Um, there are seven modes on this car. Can you believe that? Seven different driving modes. I mean, you've got like comfort, dynamic, you've got off-road, you've got all-road. That's all controlled down here by the Audi management system. It's just below, there's a little button here above the, the volume thing, just below the, uh, the actual set, the heating system. Um, and it's really easy to use. You, you just push like that and it pops up on the screen here and then you can just select, you know, by scrolling up and down, you go into off-road, you can go efficiency. Um, it's very easy to do is basically what I'm trying to say. You don't need to spend hours sort of fiddling around even while you're driving along, I'm doing that, which makes life nice and easy. Likewise with the, the entertainment system in this car, the, the sounds, um, the tunes, the, the DAB radio. You've got this wonderful uh, Bang & Olufsen surround system in this car. So it comes as standard. Um, you wouldn't expect anything less. You know, there are other companies out there, but I think Bang & Olufsen do make a very, very nice sounding system. And that's all controlled. Yet again, you can put the equalizer into that, set everything up exactly the way that you like, you know, when you're driving this car. It's really nice. Um, Let's talk about a few more sort of things that we should that are more important in this car, I think, like the safety aids, for example. Now, this is one car where you are not, <laughs> you're not gonna be scared to drive it. It's got so many safety aids, it is incredible. There's a lot of cars on the road today, so I'm sorry if I keep sort of veering off a little bit here, just checking the, the width on this car. Um, the Audi systems management in this car has no less than <laughs> five different lasers, it has 12 ultrasounds, it's even got a laser scanner, it's got a laser scanner, can you believe that? <laughs> it's like, do, you, do you remember that kit car from back in the 80s? Well, well yeah, okay Michael, <laughs> I used to love that. Um, it's got six cameras on this car as well, so all around you are very much covered. And speaking of cameras, don't forget you've got the reversing camera and the forward camera on this car as well. Um, you've got the, um, I'm going into safety aids here as well, the, uh, the uh, blind spot mirrors, you've got the autonomous braking, I mean it's just NCAP 5 rating goes without saying, it's, it's a very safe car to be in and to drive. I, I feel very comfortable in this car that it's going to look after. Um, there's an option on a head up display if you want it as well, so all of that can come up on the head up. This hasn't got it on this particular car, but that's a good option. Speaking of options, there are so many add-on packs that you can get with this car. So many, it is, it's just ridiculous. I'm not gonna bore you and tell you all about them, so I've highlighted a couple of them that I wanna tell you about. First is the Audi Pilot Park Pack. Um, you gotta hear this, it's great. You pull up on your drive, you get out of your car, you pull out your, you know, your smartphone, you got an app on it, and you can actually open your garage door, park your car, shut the door, and do all that from the comfort of your armchair, if you so wish, indoors while you're watching TV or making a cup of tea. I think that's an incredible little pack to get. If it, It's a bit of an extra, it's a bit of one of those little luxurious items, um, but I like that one, I thought it was fun. Another one, not that I tow many things, when I mean tow, you know, like trailers or uh, caravans, caravans, <coughs> um, but when you do, most people, the first time they tow, it's very, very difficult to reverse and park your trailer. Now, Audi do a trailer pack. Um, sounds like something that, well, uh, some horrible pop star from America was born, I was born in a trailer pack. <laughs> um, but they do a trailer pack that will uh, simplify your life when it comes to reversing and parking your horse box or your caravan. Or you might have a couple of jet skis if you're really cool. So there you go. There are a couple of the packs that I've highlighted. One pack I think is essential is the tour pack. Now the tour pack, basically includes the distance control and the lane keeping and all that. It's, these are things that you need to speak to your Audi salesman about. Um, it's not something I'm here to review, but I can tell you about them. So the tour pack is the one that I would recommend that you go for as an add-on to your entry-level S-Line car. I think that, that would just make this just about perfect, in my honest opinion. Um, there are a couple of other, like you've got the urban pack, you've got the park pack, all things like that. Speak to the salesman about those. You're gonna love it. Um, so, we, we've, another thing which we, I think we should discuss in this car is the economy. And the good thing about the car 
comes with a 48 volt system. The Audi Q8 is now running a 48 volt system. And you, you probably think, well, what's the difference of that to me? Well, the 48 volt system is like a mild hybrid. And the way it works is through the Kurs recovery system, you know, the KERS, uh, originally invented by Formula One. The idea is to kinetic energy recovery system. It takes energy from coasting and braking and turns it into battery power using a lithium battery to store it. It's exactly what this car does. And then when required, the car will automatically coast the car to save you fuel. And speaking of fuel and saving fuel, we are currently getting almost 28 to the gallon around town, which I think is very good for that. It's, don't forget, it's a six cylinder, three litre engine that's powering this, 280 odd brake horsepower. I think that's very good, 28 to the gallon. Uh, Audi say 33 combined. I reckon it's going to blitz that. I reckon we're talking probably 35, maybe even 36 to the gallon out on the run, which would be incredible if you can get that. Um, another thing which perhaps isn't so incredible is the warranty on this car. Now, I was expecting a little bit more, just a little tad more than it's three years or 60,000 miles. Come on, Audi. I mean, this is a decent car. It's not going to break down. The, the parts on this car are high quality parts. I think you could go five years unlimited. That, that to me, for 64,000 UK pounds entry level, five years unlimited warranty? Come on, I think that's reasonable to ask. But then it's only me asking. If we all get behind it, maybe you know we could end up changing their mind and twisting their arm a little bit, so to speak. Another thing to ask your salesman about is the, it's called the all-in plan. The all-in plan, there you go, guys. Now, an all-in plan is basically your servicing, your, um, you know, wherever you are in the world, there's like MOTs. So it's to, it's to do with that. And ask your salesman about it, the all-in plan. It's well worth a little look. Um, we've pretty much discussed this car in its entirety. Um, as I say, really, the proof is in the pudding, as my old mum used to say. You need to get down to your Audi showroom, you need to speak to the salesman, have a test drive in one of these. Try and get an extended test drive if you can. It'd be well worth it. Try the entry level. Always try the vehicle that you are intending to buy. So don't go down there and suddenly jump in an SQ8 and you're only going to buy the S-Line. That'd be stupid. Um, so try the, the car that you're going to thinking of buying take it out and if you can get that extended uh, test drive that will be fantastic all in all the audi q8 gets the big thumbs up from me it's definitely in my top five suvs so there you have it guys another video from aj the player and i hope you really enjoyed that one i did i enjoyed making it as well but before you go i'm going to give you something for free Yes, something for free. It's called the Player Bookazine. Now, if you're not aware, the Player is a much bigger organization than just a YouTube channel. We are part of a big magazine. It's a bookazine for guys. It's got cars, it's got boats, it's got planes, golf, helicopters, interviews, everything us guys love. And ladies, if you are watching, please feel free to have a look because there's nothing untoward in our pages. It's all there for everybody to enjoy, but it's mainly geared towards a male lifestyle. There you go. Now, you can have the online version of this completely free of charge. You can't have the big book. Um, that costs £100 each. I'd love to give you one for nothing, but I don't think my boss would be too happy about that. But you can have the online one. And we're not even going to data capture off you, because all you've got to do is put your name in and your email. And then you can download it, or you can actually flick the pages online, because the clever bods at the player have made it so you can do it with your finger or a mouse. Very clever. I love using it. It's great. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, so now you need to know how to get that. Two ways. One is, hang on, pull that in there. There you go. www.theplayer.co.uk. Go straight to the subscribe section. Just stick your name and your email in there, like I said. Hang on, I'll leave it up there for a minute so you can remember. I'll do better than that. Ready? There you go. Up there. There's a link straight through to the website. Go there as well if you want. When you get there, just fill in those details that I told you about. Simple as, and it's all yours, and you don't owe us anything. And don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment to the actual AJ the Player YouTube channel. Because if you subscribe, then you're gonna get, you know, regular updates, if you leave the bell sign unchecked, of course, do that. And then we're putting up different videos every week. You know, could be anything. Even I don't know half the time. That's good fun about doing this job. One thing that I would like to ask you is don't forget the thumbs up, guys, because I don't get pay rises, I don't get bonuses, you know, it's no more money in it, but it is. Pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors. It means we're doing a good job. If you don't think we're doing a good job, don't give us a thumbs up. But if you do, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next week with something else.